Hey math students, how you doing? Today we're going to be looking at uh, the average rate of change of a function. Now, oh, hey, cool, we have a problem, let's do it. It says f of x equals 1 half x squared minus 3x plus 7. Find the average rate of change over the interval x uh, is between 2 and 10. Okay, let's think about this for a second. First off, f of x. Uh, I know what that is. That's a quadratic function. Um, I can tell. I've seen these things before. Uh, and it's a quadratic function that opens up because this first coefficient is positive. And what I know about quadratic functions is they go down and then, with this type, they go down and then they go up like that. Well, my experience with the term rate of change is that when we're talking about, let's say, linear functions, it's just the slope of the line. It's rate of change, slope, gradient is another word sometimes used. Those are all synonyms. Well, this thing, the rate of change, is constantly changing. So what are we talking about? Well, we're talking about finding the average. So let's think about what that means for a second. Um, let's say I drive from Houston to Dallas in five hours. Houston to Dallas is 240 miles, and I make it in five hours. It's not rocket science to figure out what the average speed is, okay? You take 240 miles, you divide it by five, you get 48. Ah, easy. Now, does that say anything about how I actually drove? No. I could have taken a two-hour lunch break and then driven like a lunatic the rest of the way to get there on time, or I could have packed a lunch beforehand, eaten in the car, and driven a nice leisurely 48 miles per hour the entire way. You don't know. But you do know that as long as you know the, the change in time, which was five hours, and the change in distance, which was, which was 240 miles, you do know the average rate of change, or the average speed. We're going to do the exact same thing here. Okay, uh, even though the rate of change is constantly changing here, all we're worried about is the endpoints. And here we have the two x coordinates of the endpoints. So this is what we're going to do. What we're going to do is we're going to say we're going to find the slope of the line that goes through those two endpoints, and we're going to say that slope is the average rate of change. Okay, cool. Okay, slope is change in y divided by change in x. So that's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So let, let's write it using f. Let's write f of x2 minus f of x1 over x2 minus x1. That is the slope of, of our line, and it's also the average rate of change. Okay? Uh, well, I know what x2 and x1 are. They're 10 and 2. And by the way, y'all, it doesn't matter which one you call x1 and which one you call x2 as long as you are consistent in this fraction. Okay, so x2 minus x1 is going to be 10 minus 2. And let's see, f of x2, uh, that's going to be f of 10. So 10 squared is 100, half of that is 50, minus 30 gets me 20, plus 7 is 27. So this is 27 minus... Now I have to do f of 2. Uh, 2 squared is 4. Half of that is 2. Minus 6 is going to get me negative 4. Plus 7 is 3. So I end up with 27 minus 3, which is 24, over 10 minus 2, which is 8. And 24 divided by 8 is 3. Okay? So the average rate of change from x equals 2 to x equals 10 is 3. And let's see what that is graph looks like. And sure enough, we see that it's a parabola, and uh, we're going from the point 2, 3 to the point 10, 27. And uh, sure enough, that line has a slope of 3. Okay, let's do another one. Um, okay, so let's do... Let's do g of x, or no, h of x. h of x equals 1 over x minus 4 over 3, 5. Okay? Cool. A rational function. 
I like those. Um, well, let's get to work here. Uh, we know that it's going to be uh, 5 minus 3 in the denominator. So now we just got to figure out what's f of 5. It's going to be 1 over 5 minus 4. That's 1 over 1. That's 1. And f of 3 is going to be, or sorry, I said f, I meant h. Uh, h of 3 is going to be 1 over 3 minus 4. That's 1 over negative 1. That's negative 1. So 1 minus negative 1, also known as 2, uh, over 5 minus 3, also known as 2. And so this gets us a slope of 1. And let's see what that uh, graph looks like. And sure enough, we see our rational function there. Um, and uh, going through the point 3, negative 1, 3, negative 1, and the point 5, 1. Uh -huh. And sure enough, it looks like it has a slope of 1. That's our average rate of change. Uh, let's look at another one. One more. This time, let's look at g of x equals 3x minus 7 over 5. And I want this on the interval from 3 to 9. Okay. Same procedure. We're going to have a fraction here. 9 minus 3. I always, I always arrange it so that I have a positive number in the denominator. I just prefer that. Uh, okay, so I want g of 9. g of 9 is going to be 27 minus 7, which is 20, over 5. So that's 4. And now g of 3. g of 3 is 3 times 3, 9, minus 7, which is uh, 2, over 5. And did I do that right? Uh, I believe I did. So, uh, so that's going to be minus 2 fifths. So I'll call that minus 0.4. Okay? So this turns out to be uh, 3.6 over 6. Oh, I know what that is. That's 0.6, also known as 3 fifths. Cool, okay. Let's take a look at the graph. And what the heck? All I see is a line. Oh, hold it. I know what's going on. Okay, look, y'all. This is just a linear function. If I, uh, if I do it this way, I'm going to say, let me call this 1 fifth times 3x minus 7. So that means it's going to be 3 fifths x minus 7 fifths. Well, my average rate of change is going to be, if this is linear, it's got a constant rate of change. There it is right there. So yeah, it better be, we better get 3 fifths. That's our slope. And whenever you have a linear function, the average rate of change will be the slope of the function. Okay? All right, I think, you're, uh, uh, I think you got a pretty good handle on this, so till the next time, see you later.